Procter & Gamble is working with Agara using that company's artificial intelligence to handle customer service calls each year. Now with me is the CEO of Agara, Abhi Manu, uh, to explain more about the company, its expanded relationship with P&G, and just the, the whole field of artificial intelligence, which is fascinating. I think maybe the most interesting industry going on right now. So welcome. Thank Great you. to have you here. So you've been working with Procter & Gamble, of course, an iconic American company mm -hmm. since 2017. So tell me what are you doing for P&G? Sure. So Agara is what we call a real-time voice AI company. Um, each one of those three words means different things. So one is it's artificial intelligence. The objective is to create um, uh, systems and machines which can uh, work by themselves without human direction. Uh, then on top of it is voice AI, where we largely focus on human speech. Uh, speech is, as you can imagine, the way we primarily like to communicate in almost all situations. Mm -hmm. And so an AI system that works on top of speech often gives us a lot of advantages in terms of how we take the science forward. Okay, well that's just fascinating. That you can, I can't imagine what the technology behind that. And in terms of trying to figure out, I mean you've got people that speak different ways, different styles, use different words, different accents, different, I mean there's all kinds of things. How did you figure all that out? And I assume it's a work in progress. It, well, it, it always is a work of progress. Uh, it's, um, the science itself is a work in progress. Um, one of the key things that we have to deal with is not just different accents and so on, but geography uh, and countries. So we, for example, operate in six different countries today, not just the U.S. Um, and apart from the dialects or the accents that we get, we also deal with multiple languages. Um, plus, um, you know, if you received a phone call here in New York City, the caller could be sitting absolutely anywhere. They could be in, in San Francisco. The audio has to travel from here to, uh, from San Francisco to New York, from here to our servers, which are located all over the U.S., processed and then sent back here. All of that has to happen in less than half a second. So the engineering, of course, is, is it's huge and it's fascinating, but I think one of the key areas where we've made a dent is um, AI models, so underlying all AI is what we call models. These are mathematical statistical models which determine uh, essentially an outcome given an input. That's the basis of all of this. Okay, so you've explained a little bit how this helps the consumer. Um, what about the company? Like how does this help a Procter & Gamble or any other company? Right, so for most companies their objective is that as we provide this highly efficient customer support, they do really want to have a human conversation. I mean, there are people like us mm -hmm. who are manning these stations. Unfortunately, because of their business process requirements that exist, you know, and you need to collect data, you need to know exactly why the customer asked you a certain question because it helps them improve their own products and services. But because of all of that, quite often what happens is that agents are stuck in doing these manual routine tasks, which you as a customer don't care about. What we enable them to do is break out of that web. They are no longer focused on doing these things which don't really matter to the consumer, but they get done. That's where the AI helps them. And essentially the agent is now free to talk to the customer. So it elevates the customer's experience, but also a, a big secondary benefit that you get is we are able to cut out a lot of dead air. We are able to cut out a lot of time where nobody's talking, you're on hold, you're waiting and mm -hmm. so on. And so therefore, to manage the same volume of queries, you actually need fewer people. Mm. And so it also directly impacts their bottom line. Well, and that's great for the customer too, because who wants to sit on hold? You know, you've got that. a million things going on and you're waiting to be, you know, be picked up by a customer service representative or something. True, so true. what kind of information can you glean from these calls? So there's a whole host of things. Mm -hmm. um, we classify them in three different buckets. Uh, the first one is where routine tasks are involved. So this is where uh, they might need to query different systems. They might need to, for example, go into a billing system and pull out your last bill if that's your problem. Uh, they might require you to query a system where which checks whether or not you know, connectivity is there at your home and so on and so forth. Uh, so there is a routine task. There's a second part which is where you as a consumer are giving them information. So as we are saying, hey, my name is Abhimanyu, I live in New York. Uh, my problem, I, I purchased, you know, let's say Huggies diapers or, or Pampers diapers from you, mm -hmm. uh, and this is the problem. These are objective data points that we have given. So it's the second part is to glean out this objective data point and put that in the right places. Mm -hmm. Imagining the company would probably gather enough data where they might have an early signal if there's a problem that maybe would need a recall or, or something like that. So 
It's, it's like, I mean, this just makes everything more efficient. It does. And uh -huh. in fact, um, early warning systems, uh, the kind that you just described, is one of the key parts. Uh -huh. um, especially when we look at consumer product companies, uh, especially when it has to deal with, you know, kids or your skin, healthcare related things and so on. So any consumer issue which has been uh, on the severe end needs to be flagged as early as possible. And then the future for Agara as well as the AI, what can we... How can we expect to have AI as part of our life in 10 years or so? That's where it becomes interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so today, what we just discussed is what we call agent assist. That's where we help the agent know mm -hmm. more things. Mm -hmm. um, one of the key development projects that we have uh, right now, one of the most exciting things, is a completely autonomous conversation. Now, if you've had you know, Alexa at home or a Google Home, uh, you can actually talk to them. Um, they are, however, capable of having very, very brief conversation. You ask them about weather, they tell you what it is. Um, what we are trying to create is the next level of this, where you can actually have a human conversation, but focused on a very specific topic. It's a whole new paradigm. It's a completely really, new I paradigm. Really, I mean, it's fascinating. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in and explaining Agara, what you're doing, and how you see this whole industry. I appreciate it. Thank so, you so much. Yes, and yeah. thank you as well for joining us. We'll be right back.